everyone, welcome back. It's been a little while since I've done a fly tying video, so I thought I'd do one today. This one right here, it's a uh, what what you call a feather wing streamer. It's meant for trolling, and uh, I'm going to show you how to do it tandem style, which means there's two hooks. You can see the hook here in the front, and then there's a wire that attaches to this rear hook right here. You can also use really long shank hooks like this. This is a uh, size 2 9 XL. As you can see the overall length is about the same as the fly. What I show you today will still apply if you want to just use one long hook. But I'll show you how to do it tandem. This particular fly right here is called uh, the Black Ghost or at least a variation of it. it it's generally uh, how it looks. So the way I do these, the, as far as the hooks go, that front hook is just a standard wet hook, size 4. And the uh, trailing hook is a, a standard wet hook, size 6. And on this particular fly, it has a uh, has yellow hackle for, for a tail black floss on the body with silver tinsel as a rib. That's for the front and back. And for the uh, wings, it's a white saddle hackle. And uh, that's imitation jungle cock. You can get the real stuff if you want, but it's a little more expensive. I just use the, uh, the cheap painted on type stuff. And uh, on the top there is peacock hurl. And the wire is, uh, I got this stuff right here. Berkeley makes it. Most fly tying shops should have it. It's called Steel On. I usually cut the wire about two and a quarter inches long. And you'll definitely want to use wire cutters for these. You don't want to use your fly tying scissors because they, they would probably work, but you're going to dull them up pretty quick. So we're going to start with the trailing hook and just like any other fly you just uh, lay down your thread base We'll tie in that yellow tail right now And we'll tie in the silver tinsel. And you'll want the silver side facing the hook, right up against the hook. When you go to wrap the silver on the body, it just makes it an easier transition when you do it that way. So let that hang out the back for now. Go back up to the front. Now we're going to take the wire, feed it through the eye, right about to where the tie-in point is for the tail. Just give it a couple wraps. You want to keep this right on the underside of the hook. You don't want it to wander off to the side. So you might have to unwrap and kind of adjust it, move it over as you work your way down. Looks like it's going to stay. So now what you do here you want to wrap it up to the top to the eye, down again then up again. And you want to tie it down really tight with close wraps. Then after this, we're going to put uh, head cement on all those threads, and that is actually what holds the hook to the wire. When that cement dries with all those wraps on there, it holds it on there nice and tight. It probably doesn't sound like it would be that secure, but it, it, it does work. Alright, so we got it wrapped on there pretty good. Uh, for head cement, I use this stuff called Hard as Hull. 
seems to be a pretty durable cement. You want to make sure all those thread wraps are nice and covered. All around. So now you take some black floss. I use the uh, four strand rayon. I usually cut about a foot of it off. And I just use two strands. And then I'll use the other two strands for the front hook when we get to that. Try to get it about the midpoint here. And I just give it a couple wraps that way and come back. It just kind of locks it in. And you're just going to wrap it down to the tail and back up to the eye. Alright, you made it back up to the eye. Alright, so now I'm going to take that uh, tinsel, just wrap it up toward the front. Try to keep it spaced apart as best as you can, nice and even. few more wraps and just uh, finish it up. I see my last wrap there. It wasn't too even, but that's uh, that's close enough for government work. Alright, so that's the trailing hook. All done. So there's the uh, front hook. That's the size 4. This video is probably going to be a little longer than my other fly tying videos, but there's just a little bit more to doing these than a regular fly. We're going to tie in the floss. I mean uh, the uh, tinsel right now, silver side facing the hook, just like last time. The camera's pretty close to the vise, so if, I, uh, if my wraps aren't nice and uh, perfect, it's because uh, you know my camera's so close. That that's my excuse. All right, so now we grab, we're going to grab that trailing hook right here. Now the way I do it, I have the front hook like the way it is now. And I usually have the trailing hook up like that. You can do it down like this if you want. It's up to you. What I've been told is if you're going to be trolling these shallow, uh, it's better to have the hook rear hook facing up. If you're going to be trolling these really deep down in the water, I've heard it's better to have the rear hook facing down, so it's up to you the way you want to do it, but I'm, I usually do them like this. So you want to be a little bit, lay the wire down a little behind the eye. So I just give it about two or three good loose wraps because you want this sitting right on the top of the shank and you want to make sure your hook isn't going to be twisting sideways. I just kind of give it loose wraps on the way down just so I can keep looking at it and adjusting it. Sometimes you might want to stand right up and look down at it and make sure it looks nice and straight. If, if your hook goes a little sideways, sometimes if, if it's not too tight here, you can just grab the hook and twist it one way or the other. You might have to unwrap it a couple times if you have too much tension on it. But I think this is going to be all right. Looks like it's sitting on top of the hook pretty good. Alright, so I'm going to wrap all the way up, down, and back up again with nice, tight, close wraps, just like we did on the trailing hook. More head cement. 
cover all those wraps right up. So now I have these other two strands of floss from that are left over from when I did the rear hook. Alright, so let's grab that tinsel now. All right, so now I'm gonna rotate this around. I'm gonna tie in, tie in some uh, yellow bucktail. You want it the length to be about like the overall length of the whole whole fly. If you got a few loose strand ones that are a little longer, that's all right. That's good. I, I usually do it actually a little more sparse than that. That's a little more than I usually put on there, but we'll we'll make it work. All right, so we got it flipped back around again. Now we're going to tie in a little bit of peacock curl up on the top. I like to use uh, four strands. My earlier flies I used to use uh, two. But this stuff's actually pretty fragile, so it can uh, break off pretty easy. And uh, rather than trimming the ends off. I just I like to keep them natural because they have like a nice taper to them. And you want the overall length to be about the whole length of the fly. It's right about like probably right about there. And it's okay if they're you know if a couple of them stick up, a couple of them stick down. Sometimes the randomness doesn't matter when it's being pulled through the water. It's all going to be streamlined anyways. The stuff that's hanging off over the front there I usually just uh, give it a little trim. So now comes the fun part. We're going to be tying on the feathers. So this step is it's kind of a separate step. You don't have to do it this way but it, it can help you out especially if you're just learning how to do it. So um, what these are, this is like one side, this is the other. What is it? It's two feathers, white hackle feathers, stacked on top of each other. I usually take my bodkin here and I put a little bit of uh, head cement on it and I put it on the spine of the feather. Then I'll place the other white feather on top of that. And then I'll take uh, the jungle cock feather or your imitation one, and I lit and I do the same thing. I kind of glue it to the spine, and I leave myself some stems sticking out just because it makes it easier to handle them when you're tying them in. So these are all glued together right here. It just makes it easier. Now you can tie them in one at a time if you want, and that can be kind of challenging. There's people that are really talented and can do that, but it's just easier for me to glue them together like this. See, you're starting to get an idea of how it's all going to look when it comes together. So what I usually do is I put one side on, give it a couple wraps, put the other side on, give it a couple wraps, and then you might have to unwrap, adjust, and so on until you get it just right. It takes a little practice and a little patience, but you can do it. So one thing you don't want to do is sometimes if you put them down too low your feathers will start to come up like this way. You want them running straight back to the hook as best as you can. And it can be a little difficult. So after messing around with it a little bit I think I got it. So they're lined up pretty well. So I'm going to give it a few more wraps here. And then all those little uh, stems.
stems coming off the feather there. I'm going to trim all those off. I think that is just about it right there. Shut up with a little head cement. I think we got it. A lot of times with these, uh, I'll put a coat of head cement on. Here's that hard as hull stuff like I mentioned earlier. And then I have this other stuff here. Move that out of the way. It's uh, made by Angler's Corner. And it's high gloss wet cement and this stuff I mean you can use as regular head cement but I what I do is after after the head dries I'll put a coat of this on using the bodkin and then I might even put an, another coat of it on and it gives that that nice clear shiny head and makes it look nice and even it hides like all your wraps and stuff Make, just makes it look really nice so I think it came out pretty good. I think that will catch some fish. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention, when you, when you look at them like straight on, see where the feathers come together, it's almost like an up, upside down V. Uh, that's how you want it, like that. Um, I'm going to show you how it shouldn't look. I got a an, an older fly here that didn't come out right. One of, my, one of my mistake flies, but as you can see, like see how the feathers come up they're not in line like it is on that one. So I kind of messed that one up and if you look at it like straight on, I mean that's like almost the opposite of how it's supposed to be. That's a right side up V, it should be an upside down V. So this is what I screwed up on back a while ago. So you can kind of see it with the fur. So there it is everyone. That is the uh, Black Ghost Featherwing Streamer. Might take a, a little practice to tie one of these. I'm still kind of getting the hang of it. I I still screw these up pretty regularly. So it, it does take some practice, but they're a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun making flies like this. So thanks everyone for watching. Until next time.